Well, in this episode of Embroidery Medic, I may have actually lost my first patient. Uh, hi, my name is John Deere from John Deere's Embroidery Legacy, and I'm going to show you probably one of the worst digitized designs I've seen in a long, long time. <laughs> Now, here's my question for you today. Have you ever downloaded or purchased a design that is so bulletproof that you can barely get through sawing it? If you have, type in yes, and I'm going to show you one here that I think takes the cake. Now, this is a design that a customer sent me that they had custom digitized for a logo. And I, I got to be honest, I've almost lost all hope for this, no pun intended, but there are 27 color changes in this design. And there's just layer upon layer of stitching in this tiny little logo that is going on a left chest. If you look at this, you can just tell by looking at the front of it that there's going to be huge problems. And if we look at the back of it, it is just a series of tie-ins and tie-outs and the density upon density and this is just going to wreak havoc on the machine. So if you want to see a design explosion, uh, this is it. This is about as bad as it could possibly get. So we are going to take the original artwork and we're going to try to think through it a little bit differently. I'm going to try to layer these colors dimensionally so that we are not adding up nearly as many color changes and so that we are not adding nearly as much density in this design as well. Okay, first thing I want to let you know is this video might not be pretty. And what I mean by that is I have so much work to do. I'm probably going to just, you know, rush through this, try to make the changes as quickly as possible and talk my way through it. Now, this is a design that is only three and three quarter inches in width. So it's definitely meant for left chest. Uh, luckily, it is a uh, EMB file. It, I don't think it was originally digitized in Hatch, but it was digitized in the Wilcom platform. And I'm assuming commercial. And and if I uh, turn off the true view, I can actually uh, see the stitches and I can see that it's listed as a, as a custom fabric. That tells me that it, it actually probably was done in the commercial platform. But when I look at this right away, I'm seeing that the lettering itself, it actually, let me just grab one of these so I can be sure. If I look at the lettering, there's absolutely no underlay assigned to it and there's absolutely no pull compensation assigned to it either. Uh, I, <laughs> I said to myself I was not going to redigitize this entire design and I'm not, but I know I'm going to be making some changes. So the first thing I'm probably going to do is come in here and actually first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that artwork and I'm going to lock it in place. Uh, I did save some time and I brought in the artwork, put it behind the EMB file, resized it to the approximate size that I needed. And whenever I do that, I then lock the artwork in place so I know it's not going to move. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start grabbing these objects and I'm just going to click the shift key and grab objects as I'm moving forward. And I'm going to try to grab all of these little objects of the lettering and get them highlighted. Now that they're highlighted, I'm going to go over to my stitching effects and I'm going to put on the pull comp and see what happens. Now I just want to get a visual first of if it's going to distort the object at all. Uh, it does to a certain extent. You know, it might be too drastic for me to do that to a customer's file. They've already run a sample. They've seen what the lettering looks like. But I am going to go in and I'm going to turn on some edge run underlay. Now the problem is because, and let me just zoom in here, because the edge run underlay is going closer to the edge and there is no pull compensation assigned, I can't use my normal margin from edge. I'm going to have to go to medium. And although it's not exactly where I would want it, it's still going to give me a little bit more stability within that object. Now here as well, the, the lettering at the bottom, these, uh, you know, the small text at the bottom here, I'm not going to mess with those because they are already tiny. Um, you know, they, they're, they're done and I'm, you know, I'm also not going to mess with these too much. Let me see here. I'm going to turn off the true view for a second. These ones though, I am going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit of pull comp to those because I did see those on screen and they looked a little bit too thin when they sewed out. I'm also going to go into this lettering here and let's just grab all of these objects. And as I grab them, I'm going to add underlay to these as well so that they will sew it a little bit cleaner. So let's go here and do some 
edge run underlay again I'm going to change it to a medium setting so it's not as close to the edge and now I at least feel a little bit more comfortable that I've made a, you know a, a attempt to try to increase the quality of the lettering a little bit as well but this is really the culprit right here and if I do a quick redraw I'm just going to come here to my player and I'm going to actually go through by color you can see and I have a color here then I do another color here that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty two color changes just in that area and I'm guessing if I I'm gonna actually stop this here for a second I'm guessing if I grab that object look at the density is actually set at 0.45 millimeters of space that's almost full density for a garment so I'm basically taking 22 colors of full density this is actually set at 0.4 and I'm just hammering it on top of each other stitch after stitch I can guarantee this machine looks like it, it probably sounds like it's taking off to the moon as it's sewing and I was really surprised that there weren't any broken needles. I, I'm guessing that there were, might have been numerous thread breaks. So we're just going to get rid of all those all together. Let's grab that first one. Let's grab the second one. And we're going to put those where they belong, which is deleted. <laughs> so now we have sort of a, a fresh you know, palette, a fresh plate to work with. I'm going to take a look at this design. I'm going to go to my 6 to 1 scale. If you've covered any of my education, uh, you know that I digitize at a set scale. It makes me a better digitizer. And if I start looking at this and I start saying, you know, what colors are going to be first, second, third, I'm going to actually look at the blue that's going on top here. And I'm going to say to myself, I really need to have this color done first. Then I'm going to do this one second, this one third, and this one fourth. It's going to be underneath. And then I'm going to start looking at the other colors and seeing how I can start to build them up with the background. Now, uh, this is, uh, let's put it this way. I'm going to do the best job I possibly can on this design, realizing that it's going to be so tiny that there might be some elements that not, are not 100% true to the artwork. But the point is it's going to be cleaner and it's going to sew and it's not going to be bulletproof. Now this is pretty much going to be artistic merit no matter what I try to do. So I'm going to actually do a digitized closed shape. I'm going to choose a tatami stitch. And the first thing I'm going to do is just actually do this point right here. And I'm just going to digitize right outside of the area. Make sure that I almost come right on to the lines that I see. And hit the enter button. Now I'm just going to hit the H key and I'm going to change the angle so it is pretty much at a zero angle. Now I'm going to come in here, I'm going to turn off all of the underlay, I'm going to go into my effects, and I'm going to basically tell it to do a travel on edge, and I'm going to set it at, let's say, 0.8 millimeters. And I'm just going to set it like that. Now if I look at my uh, tie-in and tie-out, and let's just go over here, I can see that I have a tie-in and a tie-out. And my tie-off, I want to make sure that I actually set my tie-offs after, afterwards so that they are not a method one, but that they are a method two. And I'll explain that afterwards as well. But at this point, we're going to keep on stitching, and I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to come right over to here. So let's just escape out of there for a second. Very low density so far, hardly any stitches in that object. But I'm just gonna use the same digitized close shape and I'm gonna come right to here and I'm going to digitize pretty much right on this line. Make sure I cut it short a tiny little bit, come straight across and exaggerate a little bit on this side as well and just make sure that I get a perfectly straight line there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the H key and I'm going to change the angle of this one as well so it's going to be pretty much at a 
uh, you know, 48. I'm trying to keep it almost horizontal right to the top. If I wanted to, I could use this guideline right at the top to sort of show the angle that I want, which is going right there pretty much. Now that I have that angle set and I have that one piece done, I'm going to take that and I'm going to actually do uh, underlay, turn off underlay again. I'm going to go back to my stitch types. I'm going to change that from a 0.4 to a 0.8 and I'm going to do a travel on edge as well. So now when I look at that object with travel on edge, I'm going to go to my stitching and I'm going to make sure that I actually have it as a method 2 tie off. And I can see that my stop function is right at the top there. So that way it's going to give me a nice clean line. Now, as I start moving through my objects, this is the fun part, I don't necessarily have to worry about redigitizing them over and over again. I'm gonna duplicate this one, and when I duplicate that one, I am going to then move it over a little bit, and let's click right on it here, and let's just move this here. Let's turn off the true view so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll just start placing these pretty much overlapping on each other. Now the only thing I want to make sure that I do is whether there's a tie in or a tie off at the beginning or the end really doesn't matter. If I hit the H I can see that my tie off and my tie in are at e e uh, equal parts. But I'm going to now come in and start changing the color of that one. And then I'm going to escape grab that object and let's just make sure that we actually have a travel on edge so there's my travel on edge right there this one as well let's turn it into a travel on edge right there that's going to give me a, a certain you know semblance of clean lines as it moves forward so now I'm going to take that object and let's duplicate that one as well actually let's just make sure I only, only have the one object uh, chosen and when I duplicate that I'm going to take that object and I'm going to move it right over here and kind of, you know, hit it one more time and rotate it a little bit and just put it in place so I have my next object done. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. This is so small, you know, at a, the scale that it's at, we're talking at 600% zoomed in. I'm really just using artistic merit and making sure that these designs, these objects are actually coming out fairly clean. So as I'm moving forward on this, I actually have very low density creating each of these lines. And I'll just continue to go around and duplicate these, and then I'll move them over, and I'll continue to you know, position them right over like this, and you know, I might have to go in and adjust the angle ever so slightly, but that way I get a pretty close resemblance to the original artwork as I move forward. So this one here, I'm going to see this, and actually for this one, if I do hit the H, I might want to cut this one a little bit shorter on the top and the bottom as well. And you can go in and make, you know, all of these, uh, you know, adjustments as I'm moving forward. I, you know, there's no saying that I, I have to stick with the original shape, but it just makes it a lot easier as I'm actually digitizing to you know change these as I'm moving forward. So this one I'm going to choose that color right there. And then I'll just continue on and I'll digitize each of these independently. Duplicate them and move them. So now that all of my objects are done, I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different color changes so far. And I'm going to rely on these colors bleeding together a little bit to give me that look that we're actually getting within the design itself. There's no use trying to go in there and create all of that as separate tiny objects. Now, in reality, all I have to do now is this blue outline. And this is going to be a little bit trickier. I'm going to ignore, for the most part, the shadow that's happening underneath of these. Because to try to achieve that, all you're going to be doing is creating a lot of density on top of density. 
Uh, I always have said that it's better to let the person's imagination fill in the blanks with regards to embroidery. So that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. Now I'm going to choose a different color. So let's just choose this blue color right here. And I'm going to go to my digitize blocks. And I'm going to now go in and digitize these manually. So if I come in here, digitize blocks, go to a satin stitch, uh, I'm going to make sure that I change my underlay as I move forward, but I'm just going to put a point right here, 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 and here, and hit enter. And let's turn on the true view. You can see that there right now. I've just created that object. Now to get from this point to this point though, I'm going to actually go to my digitize open shape and I'm going to use a run stitch and I'm going to put a run stitch right in between those two stitches right there. So it's going to do something like that. Okay. Now that's going to give me a object that's going to connect it. And that's really important because it, it ended here. So I'm going to come in again. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take that digitize open shape, do a single run, come right into this shape here and I'll actually travel into this one right here just like that and hit enter and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my digitize blocks and I'll digitize this as a satin stitch so I'm going to come here put a little point right here come back hit enter and then I'm going to go back into my digitize open shape go back to a run stitch make sure that I connect between the two and I'll travel into this one as well and then I'll hit the enter, I'll digitize blocks, and I'll continue to do this tiny little piece right here. This is so small, and oops, I chose the wrong tool, so let's just undo real quick. Hit the undo button, go back to digitize blocks and make sure that I'm on satin, and then let's just go right here, do this tiny little piece, and hit the enter. Now I can come back into my digitize open shapes, come back into this object right here and right at this point I'm going to allow the software to take over with joining closest point so I'm going to go all the way over to here and I'll just digitize this little swirly all as one piece and we'll just keep going around and when I get right to this point here I'm going to do a straight curve straight curve curve, curve, and try to cut it a little short. And again, I chose the wrong shape, so I gotta do that one more time. So I'm gonna come here, do curves all the way around. And here I'm gonna do a straight, curve, straight, curve, 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 cut short the open end and now I'm going to just walk into the next object so again I'm going to come right in here just like this hit enter and then go back to my digitize blocks do this shape right here enter and then I'm going to make sure that I run into this shape right here now with this one actually I'm gonna go here 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 here, here, and then I'm going to come right down to this point here. So if I look at this, you can see that I have created the points of the actual arrow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my true view, and I'll just go right here, and let's digitize this as one shape. Enter. I need to make sure I'm on satin. So this is one shape right here. Enter. And then this will be my second shape. I'm going to come right here, go back to my digitize running stitches. And then I'll cut short my end and come right to this point right here. And then enter. So you can see how I've defined these three points of that tiny little tip of the arrow 
with running stitches. I didn't try to get really close up into the end and I really kept this open for interpretation and you know, to be honest this has a lot less color changes uh, there's a lot less going on what I might want to do to keep things consistent though is I'm going to go into that last color that I just created I'm gonna highlight everything I'm gonna make sure that I look at the settings because right now the auto setting I'm gonna change this to actually from let's say 0.3 let's do 0.5 I'm actually loosening up the density substantially I'm going to also go into my effects and my stitching and I really don't know if I need any underlay at all let's see what happens yes I think I do so I'm going to keep an underlay in there but I'll just keep a center run and then I'm going to look at the pull compensation and I'm going to change the pull comp and go from 0.2 to 0.1 just so it gets a little closer to the artwork and if I look at that it looks pretty clean so here's the thing it's only going to uh, give us the true results when we actually sew the sample so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run just this tiny little piece here on a sample and we'll see if the results are better than before okay so this is what we've come up with so far and when I say so far when you're doing something like this you have to run a sample first and then you might say to yourself you know what I gotta go back to the drawing board and that's kind of what happened here now give you an idea this is what I'm at so far and I'm gonna zoom right in here for you it actually looks ten times cleaner and there is no really hard stitches on the back of the front so I have accomplished my goal with doing something that's a little bit more artistic merit that has absolutely uh, no hard stitches in it whatsoever but what I am going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to digitize one more element I have it down to nine colors right now but I'm going to add one more color to try to give this artwork exactly what it needs so I think the customer will be happy so when I ran the sample what I noticed was this area right here where I left these gaps in between everything came out okay but it did look like it was unfinished so I'm going to zoom back into my 6 to 1 scale and I'm going to choose another color and I'm just going to choose a lighter blue color I'm going to turn off the true view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize just this line right here but I'm going to walk underneath the next color that's going to finish it off so right now I'm going to go back to my digitize satin stitch and I'm just going to come right in here and I'm going to digitize this block and actually let's cut it a little bit shorter I can digitize this block right here pretty much exactly on the artwork that I see and actually I do want to be very precise on this so let's just go right here and that's that faded object that's behind it and then I'll hit the enter now I'm going to go to my digitize open shape and I'm going to make sure that I walk straight down the center of this object until I get to the next object now I'll go back to my digitize uh, blocks and I'm going to do this shape right here and this I'm going to run in a very light color and again let's just make sure that I get this exactly where I want it I know this is tiny this is where we get into some very detailed work I'm gonna go back to my digitize running stitches travel to the next shape go back to my digitize blocks and I'm gonna put this one in right to here hit enter go back to my running stitch and again travel under the center go back to my digitize blocks hit that one again we have one more to do so I'm just gonna go right to here and that's gonna pretty much tie it up go back to my blocks and let's do this one right here so point and enter so now if I look at this object right here and if I looked at my spacing again I'm going to change this to 0.5 because that's what it was before 
I'm also going to go in and make sure that I have a center run change the pull comp to the same as it was before which was 0.1 and now I have another object that is traveling now here's the only thing that I have left to do that last object that I digitized I'm going to move it up one time in the sewing order and then now that I'm 99% sure that this design is going to be exactly the way I want it, I'll just resequence it so that I have the lettering done last. But that's pretty much all I'm going to do. And, uh, and we're going to run another sample, see how this looks, and then we should be good to go. Now while the design was running on the machine, I did resequence everything. I made sure everything was fine. And you have to remember that the original design, which is right here, had 22 color changes alone just within the logo. And I think by the time the entire stitch count was done, it was like 8,120 stitches. Now, my design has 10 color changes within the logo, so less than half. There's 7,900 stitches almost, but keep in mind that I added a lot of underlay in the uh, lettering as well so that it would stitch better. So for the most part, this design is going to stitch much better, a lot less color changes. I do have the sample here and it actually does look much better. Second time a charm with putting that extra color in there. But the proof is always in the stitching and in feeling how soft it is. I'll try to get a close up of this so that you can see the logo. But it actually does look very clean given the actual size of it. So I'm really happy with the results. And I think that we actually saved this patient. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And this was probably one of the, the I guess, most extensive edits that we've done. But I think the uh, customer is going to be really happy with the results visually and how it's going to run on the machine. See you next time. John Deere here, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like down below. To join the legacy now, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history.